Oh, hey. Hey, everybody. Um, thank you for coming to the show. This is Art Story, your local art show, profiling the um, arts and events and all the artist stuff that happened in Wyndham County. I'm your host, Esler, and today we have a pretty cool guest, a uh, friend of mine, and uh, also an awesome musician, uh, Stefan Brandstarter. How are you doing today? Very good. Thank you for having me. No problem. I'm glad you came. And you brought all your gongs today. Only some of them. There's a few more I left behind at home. How many do you have? And, um, probably 10, 11, 12. Depends. Wow. Wow, that's, that's It doesn't depend. It depends on if I use them. If I count every one that I have, which I don't really use all of them at the one time. But these are the ones that you, you use? Yeah, this is, this is kind of the sense. core of what I use. Um, and then I, when I am gonging and doing a session, I also oftentimes will bring a, a frame drum or a, a Native American tom-tom, um, conch shell. Mm -hmm. um, I have other chimes that I also use. I have a larger one, larger set. Yeah. Oh, that'll be cool. Before we go on, I would like to uh, have a, a thing to say to people um, about uh, the uh, our community here in, in Brattleboro. We I want to give uh, congratulations to the five people that won these awards. Uh, Erica Ho received the Governor's Awards in Excellence in the Arts. Elsie uh, uh, Smith and Serenity Smith Fortune won the uh, that from the New England uh, Arc. Uh, NECA. NECA, there we go. From NECA, they won the medal for Outstanding Achievement in Arts. Robert McBride from Bellows Falls is going to get the award for the Arts Advocacy. Uh, Stephen Rice from Barbara High School Union won the um, Arthur Williams Award for meter, me, meter, Meritorious Service of the Arts. And Peter Gould, friend of mine, cool guy, Writer and director, uh, theater director, was awarded the Ellen McCulloch Love Award in the Arts of Education. So, thank you for making Wyndham County proud. Seems like this is where we are, man. We are in the hub of art in Vermont. That's How does a, that feel? That's a major coup for, for Brattleboro. I think All so. five awards. I think so. What, yeah. where, are you, where are you from? Where was I born? Yeah, where were you born? I was born in Germany, right what? after the right after the war. Really? What in Germany? Munich. Munich. So when did you move to the states? Uh, my parents and sister and I immigrated uh, in '47. Hmm. How old were you? Eight months old. Eight months. Whoa. So you don't know any German, or do you know German? I wouldn't say that I know German in the strictest literal sense, but I sort of can speak German because I, I know Yiddish. Yiddish. Mm. Is that like a... It's the uh, ancient uh, language of the Jewish people. Oh. Which I just... Separate I playing... from Hebrew. Yeah. It's, it's what was spoken in uh, ostensibly you know, Poland and Eastern Europe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, I was going to say, so from there, where did you move? What, what, what we, came, you... we moved to Brooklyn. We immigrated to Brooklyn, and uh, my family uh, was there till 55 when my father, who worked for a company, mm -hmm. the company relocated to New Hampshire, and we settled in Claremont, New Hampshire. Mm. So I went uh, to school in Claremont up until right through high school, um, and then off to college. Nice. Where did you go to school? College or? Yeah, college. Uh, Boston University. And then I finished up out in the, Midwest, in the Midwest. Nice. And were you like, at that time, were you already like doing music or when did you I take had taken up, uh, yeah, my first instrument was actually clarinet, which I didn't take to very well. And then <laughs> I went to guitar, which uh, in hindsight, I wish I had kept, kept with it, but I uh, gravitated toward percussion. Mm -hmm. And um, so that was at a range around age 12, 13. And I studied with a drummer who was a big band drummer. Hmm. So I, I learned the rudiments and the basics of uh, drumming. And I was in high school and junior high school marching bands and high school orchestra, you know, the usual curriculum, you know, musical curriculum that uh, one ha involves themselves with, mm -hmm. um, chorus, choir, stuff like that. So 
Yeah. Did, did you want to study music at college or No, no, I, I have a BA in business administration. Mm. <laughs> you know, um, back in the mid-50s, the opportunities, at least in, you know, in Claremont and central New Hampshire, uh, were um, much fewer, and if, if, if at all, mm -hmm. that, you know, for exposure to, to musical education other than in the high school and stuff. Um, than they are today. You know, the opportunities are just astounding that, that I see being afforded to uh, to young people, which is great. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, no, I did not study music formally. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember one time we were hanging out, and you told me that you had your own uh, uh, venue, right? That uh, um, where you had shows, or people would you you were right? Is that I'm like not a, sure what you mean? Yeah, what? like a, a bar or like a. Right? Is that what you said? I had a record store. Record I mean, store. There we go. There well, we go. that that's that was many 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 years later. No, later. Okay. Yeah. I mean, after uh, oh, um, my journey has been along many stops <laughs> uh, throughout the world. Actually, mm -hmm. uh, after college, I went to New York City for a couple of years. Worked in. Uh, doing music at night and work during the day. Then I ended up in, with the band on a cross-country tour to California and spent a year in California and, uh, doing more music and ended up coming back and going to Europe uh, with mm. a British guitarist who we had a duo and then I worked over there and um, played for modern dancers. I was in Israel and uh, fast forward, I came back to the United States in the early 70s and um, went to work. But, uh, you know, then music was always not far from, from my consciousness, if you mm -hmm. will, or from my, my focus, my interest. So I was in a band and I formed a band and we worked together for quite a while um, up in central Vermont. And then um, Eventually, I opened up a restaurant nightclub mm. up in White River Junction. Uh, we were one of the first that um, we were, I believe, the, the first nightclub in the Upper Valley that uh, featured blues, Chicago blues bands. And we had, you know, folks like Dave Van Ronk and Jimmy Johnson and Jimmy Dawkins and, you know, the, uh, the Brubeck brothers and so on and so forth. We had a very nice uh, roster of uh, performers for a couple of years. And, um, and then I moved, uh, I sold the business and um, came south, moved to Keene, eventually came over to Brattleboro in the early 80s and um, I won't go through all the, yeah, you know, and and all the every stop, is, but <laughs> as far as the record yeah. store, in 1991 I started, uh, I was working for Vermont Business Magazine and, and I started this record store really because I was a, uh, had been a, a record accumulator slash collector mm -hmm. uh, for, for many years and involved in uh, collectibles mm -hmm. in general. And um, I needed a place to consolidate my various volume of records. You know, mm -hmm. I had stuff in the barn, in the shed, in the basement. So I started a, a weekend uh, business uh, while I was working full time and eventually uh, I went full time and that was in 1991 and then uh, I ran that for 13 years up until 2004 when um, the Wilder building fire put me out of business. Mm. I lost uh, a, lot of, a lot of records, all of the records actually. Oh man, yeah. oh that sucks. So, yeah. so I started from nothing and ended with nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that a lesson there? So, uh, so gongs, let's talk about gongs. So okay. when did you get involved with the gongs? Uh, toward the late 1990s, uh, while I was still running the store, um, I had received a newsletter from the Roll Conference Center down in Charlemont, Mass. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they, uh, one of their weekend workshops was called The Great Gong Experience. And that really piqued my interest, you know, being a percussionist. Um, and um, it was facilitated by Don Conroe, who is still alive and known as the great... Oh, the Grand Gong Master. He was the co-founder of Gong Yoga. He's a Kundalini master from originally from California. Um, and this is the gong that I. This is the my very first gong that I wow. that I owned. Uh, own. Um, my Can you father. Play it how it sounds. 
Huh? Can you see how it sounds? This was, uh, my father had given this to me. He was an antique hobbyist, and he had given this to me and, um, before I even had gone to the workshop, mm -hmm. and I didn't really know what to do with it. I always thought that a gong was, you know, an orchestral instrument, which it still is, of course. Mm -hmm. But um, uh, I had no opportunity to, to do anything with it. Um, and then when this workshop came along, I uh, took my gong with me, and, and uh, it just opened my eyes. Uh, and to say the least, my chakras as well, to, to, uh, to what the, uh, the power and the mystery uh, and the magic of, uh, of the gong um, and, and its uh, immense capabilities for, um, for healing, actually. You know? And so I came away from that weekend with uh, a, a, a newfound understanding and respect and reverence for the instrument, and uh, I just started to enthusiastically <laughs> You know, want to share it with friends and friends of friends, um, and I've just been carrying on since then. You know, I'm pretty much uh, I am, you know, if you will, self-taught. Mm -hmm. um, it's just really been an, uh, um, an evolving journey, uh, exploring, uh, developing uh, some of my own technique with it, and uh, experimenting. You know, with the uh, uh, the nature of the instrument, the sounds that it can produce, um, and each every you know each mallet that I use creates a different tone because it's hardness and softness and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So, all, are all these gongs from different parts of the world, or they are? This one down here is a, a Chinese wind gong, mm -hmm. um, and the two atop with. Uh, what is commonly referred to as with nipple gongs, mm -hmm. excuse me, uh, <laughs> um, they are more than likely from Indonesia because mm -hmm. that's typical of the gongs that they, you'll find in Indonesia mm -hmm. and Bali, uh, very similar to the gamelan orchestras that you'll, you'll find down mm -hmm. in that part of the world. Um, the, the one on the right there um, is probably Chinese. Um, I've picked my gongs up. Uh, some of a couple have been given to me from friends, so I don't really know the precise, mm -hmm. specific origin, uh, and it's it's not uh, readily possible to 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 pinpoint it exactly. Yeah. But they are typical of Chinese Japanese style gongs. You have you know uh, curved edge, you have the flat edge, um, and then of course there are larger gongs and that are you know there are gongs that are tuned to a particular pitch, and then mm -hmm. there are gongs that have a more uh, broader uh, overtone to it. Mm -hmm. Now, how so, so, so lately you've been doing uh, more and more, um, I guess, sessions with people, or how, how do you do? Well, uh, yeah, it, like I said earlier, that uh, for me it's just been an ongoing journey. Um, word got around back when I was first starting that uh, I was doing gongs. I was invited to uh, twice, I was invited to open the ceremonies for the uh, local AIDS chapter, their annual AIDS Awareness Day. Um, I was invited to uh, uh, do a gonging, quote unquote, at the Memorial Park um, Garden mm -hmm. that's uh, there for uh, Folks who have passed away from, you know, cancer. Mm -hmm. uh, I was invited by the hospice uh, organization. Uh, I've been invited to, uh, you know, to do weddings, um, metaphysics groups, and so on. Um, what was the question? <laughs> yeah, like, like, so yeah. So, what kind of people do you do these gongs for? Like, uh, well, I've done yoga groups, uh, individuals, um, and throughout the years, uh, I've had the opportunity and, and good fortune to, uh, to, uh, gong. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, that's another commonly used term. Um, folks with my fibromyalgia, migraines, um, stomach ailments. Um, I've even uh, had the privilege of um, being at the bedside of a uh, terminally ill cancer patient who, um, who was dying. And I was asked to come to, the, to their home and, um, and I I offered a, a healing gonging, mm -hmm. and uh, then I was invited to come back the next day because I was told 
that this this man um, had said that his he felt less pain. Mm. You know, and that was really just um, I, I felt so overwhelmed by the, by that feedback. It was just mm -hmm. really you know because that was still very much in the early part of my journey in the with the gong, and um, and then two days later he passed away. Mm. So um, I've I've really been blessed in that so, regard. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess I'm I'm curious about what do you th what do you think the gong has such uh, healing properties? Like, or what what do you think that is? Well. The gong is an, is perhaps the oldest instrument known to man. It's like rough about five thousand to six thousand years old. Um, originated uh, in Mesopotamia, which is now Iraq, um, and uh, you know throughout its history, it's always been used in you know for healing purposes, uh, devotionals, uh, sacred rituals. But to to uh, to answer your question. Um, It embodies the sound of Om, mm. and when one is in the presence of a the gonging, um, what happens is that the sound washes over you. It um, it, it it works on your cellular system, on all your cells, both mind, body. Um, and it just and it entrains all parts of your body so that they begin to vibrate sympathetically and in harmony uh, with each with its with each other with themselves, and so it creates a balance. You know, it enables a balancing of your entire being, giving you a a state of uh, wellness, a state of uh, tranquility, uh, peace, uh, reduces stress. Um, so I, I hope mm -hmm. I've answered your question. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I like that, uh, of, like the core, like the cellular level, you know, changing the vibration. Because yeah. that's pretty much all it is, yeah. right? Like, well, it's vibrations, vibrations, but it's with the overtones, and, and it creates a wave of mm -hmm. sound, which is why, you know, it's referred to as a gong bath, because mm -hmm. you're, you're immersed, literally immersed in the, uh, the sound of, the vibrations of the gong, you're, you're just awash with it. It's almost like you're floating in, a, in, a, in the ocean, you yes. know, just surrounded with, with waves. Oh, man, I want to do this. Can I do this? Sure. Can you, you do that right now? Sure, I'd be happy to. Cool. Well, before we go, um, okay. can, can, what is pe where can people find you? Like where? Uh... Well, right now, uh, two nights ago, I had an open house orientation um, at the uh, Helix Yoga Studio up on uh, the uh, South Main Street, 452 South Main Street, uh, with uh, Emily Weadro, who owns the studio. Um, and if I may just take a sidebar, uh, once a month she and I, uh, she does restorative yoga, and I create a soundscape mm. for the folks that, that attend. That's on the third Sunday of every month. Um, so two nights ago, um, I, I had an open house for people to come and get a sense of, uh, at no charge, to get a sense of what gonging is about, what a gong bath is, you know, it involves. It, there was no water, there were, you know, you don't take your clothes off, there are, you know, I don't, uh, it's a hands, it's a hands off, there's no hands on uh, activity going on. Um, and, um, and eight people showed up, you know, nice. you know, fortunately, thankfully, gratefully. And um, so, as far as where can people can reach me, I, my website is under construction. Um, my email is getmusic, G-E-T-M-U-S-I-C, at sovereign.net. And uh, if you have any questions, I'm happy to answer any and all questions, and they can reach me that way. Uh, I will be shortly having a Facebook page. Mm -hmm. well, I'm, I'm finally media. giving in. <laughs> I'm finally giving in to Facebook. It's important these days. It's really yeah. Important. We also have our own um, Facebook page, I'm going to plug that in. It's our story, one word, and I think it's on Facebook. It's right here. It's right there. Anyways, uh, let's go to the streets. Uh, I have this report that I haven't really uh, put so much thought into it. So let's go to this report and uh, let's get back. Sounds good. So uh, let's... Uh... <laughs>
I would just like to say it is a beautiful day in Brattleboro. Much needed rain as usual. It's not winter yet, but winter's coming. Tenemos que cambiar el tiempo hasta que estemos bien. No me gusta que la gente piense que todo va a estar bien. Lo importante es salir afuera y divertirse un poco. Cuando los días empiezan con tu venado, muy, 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 muy nublados. ¿Y qué vas a hacer? ¿Qué vas a hacer cuando la máquina esté enfrente de ti? ¿Qué vas a hacer cuando la máquina está enfrente de ti? ¿Cuánto tiempo vas a dejar y vas a dejar pasar? Solo hay algún momento y a veces tienes que sentir cuando la luna se va de ti. A veces, o a veces, a veces un poquito de amor a ti, a ti, a ti. Solo un poquito de amor para tu prójimo Y cuando no se va tienes que luchar más Con el poder de tu amor Con el Intense. Welcome back. I'm glad you liked that little report that I did. Uh, and now we're going to do a bath. So, uh, I'm going to immerse you in the, sound, the sea of sound. Yes, so now I'm going to take off my glasses and just relax. So enjoy as well yourself. Okay. Take a deep breath. Exhale slowly. Feel the breath. Take another one.
Hmm. Wow. It's beautiful. I feel very relaxed right now. Relaxed and... Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So, um, yeah, I think everybody should get some of that. Uh, please contact Stefan so you can maybe get some of this. And do you have, uh, yeah, do you have your information? Thank you so much, Stefan. You're welcome. I Thank just you. want to add that, uh, Hopefully, uh, in the next couple of weeks, we'll start having our first uh, session at the uh, Helix Studio. Look for the announcements in the newspaper, and uh, hope everyone will uh, come and look forward to seeing you all. Yes. Well, thank you so much. You're welcome. And uh, this was uh, our story.